As the checks of one bank are deposited into another, the illusion of new money exists and leads to even more new money being created. In this example, we're going to say that the required reserve ratio is 20%, and we're going to assume that banks are going to loan out as much as they possibly can. To start off, we're going to say that a $100 bill has just been found, and that person has taken that $100 bill to the bank and deposited it into their checkable deposits account. This table illustrates the creation of new money based on that single $100 bill being deposited into one bank. Each subsequent bank can lend a smaller portion of that $100 after factoring in their reserve requirement, but overall, total deposits in all banks will increase. Bank A, with the initial $100 deposit, must keep $20 of that $100 on hand because of the 20% required reserve ratio. Therefore, they can lend out the $80. After they lend out the $80 to their customer, that customer then takes the $80 and puts it into their bank account at Bank B. Of that $80, Bank B must keep $16 on hand. Therefore, they can lend out $64, and so on. The process continues until there's nothing left. This shows that, in total, the original $100 deposit will end up adding $400 in new money into the system. The money multiplier, not to be confused with the multiplier effect, is a key measure in banking that helps to predict the money supply that will be available to drive economic growth. As you can see from the formula, if the reserve requirement is 20%, the money multiplier will be 1 divided by 0.2, which is 5. We can then use the money multiplier multiplied by the excess reserves to determine the maximum checkable deposit creation that will be provided by the new money entering the system. Ironically, one of the items that is slowing current economic growth is people paying down credit card balances and other loans. This is, in effect, removing money from the system.